Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some really interesting updates to Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's dive straight into the video. So here I am on the desktop. I have just flashed the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye 64 bit onto my Raspberry Pi 4. I have booted it up, and here I am on the desktop with the new Wizard installer. So this is a new type of installer. It's going to look different, and we're going to dive into it right now. But first, I do want to say sorry that, that my screen is so huge right now. My capture card actually defaults to 4K, and I haven't got the chance to change that from the Raspberry Pi settings. Yeah. So I will zoom in a little bit right here. But let's start out by taking a look at the new wizard. So here we are with this wizard, and as you can see, it says welcome to Raspberry Pi Desktop. And this part looks pretty similar, but we actually have this kind of cool wallpaper in the background that has all of these different Raspberry Pis. Like here I can see the Pi 400, here's a Pi 4, here's like a Pi 3A, maybe, something like that. So it's and here's like a mouse. So there are some, it's a nice little wallpaper right here, but let's go and hit go ahead and hit next. And this is the same again. We can choose our language, our keyboard, and stuff like that. I'm going to hit next. So overall, it's kind of the same wizard, but there are going to be a few cool changes. And I have found all of these changes on this blog post on Raspberry Pi Org's website, which I will link down below. So if you want to see all those changes in detail, check out that link down below. But here, this is one of the biggest changes. We can now create our own user on Raspberry Pi OS. So before, you had to use the Pi user on Raspberry Pi OS, but now they're giving you the option to change it from the setup wizard. So I'm going to change my username to Luke F. Renner instead of the default Pi that used to always be on all Raspberry Pi OS systems. And again, type in the password that you want. That That is standard on basically any operating system. But it's cool to see that you can set your own username because many other operating systems do the same thing. And this is uh, for scan overlay. Like if you have black black bars on the top, you can turn this off. And that is a new little switch thing right there. That looks that looks cool too. Hit next, you can connect to Wi-Fi right here real fast. And here we are. After I have connected to my Wi-Fi network, network, it says update software, which you know this is standard too. It was on the older installer too. So there are a ton of changes, but there are some. So that is cool. I'm gonna go ahead and restart, and I'll meet you back on the desktop. Okay, so here we are on my desktop, and as you can see, my resolution has been changed to 1080p to hopefully give you guys a little bit of a better experience and just to be able to see my desktop a little bit better. But there was one thing I actually forgot to mention, and that was during the setup wizard part, you can actually connect your Bluetooth peripherals, like a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard in that setup wizard without having to wait to get to the desktop right here and then having to connect them after setting up your desktop. But it still does require a wired mouse and keyboard for the initial setup process so you can't get by with just a bluetooth mouse and keyboard but you can connect them in that initial setup wizard so that is cool but here we are on the desktop and well what is the biggest change because in the title of this video i said raspberry pi os becomes more modern and well that that the thing i was meaning there is raspberry pi os now supports wayland so raspberry pi os has been running x11 for a while now and x11 is a 37 year old program and it is kind of old now and there are definitely some screen tearing issues with it and it's just getting out of the day so there is this new one called wayland which other Linux distros like Fedora and Ubuntu actually, they come with that pre-installed on their x86 like PC versions. And it is cool to see the Raspberry Pi organization finally supporting this on their own Raspberry Pi OS. So in this video, we are going to be testing that out to see how it actually works out. By default, it is still shipping with X11. But if you were wanting to switch to it, like I want to switch to it right now in the terminal, I basically just type sudo raspy-config so you type that in the terminal you hit enter you're going to want to go down to right here where it says advanced options and it's going to be right here wayland enable experimental wayland backend so yes this is experimental but it is still really cool to see it on here and i want to test this out to see if we the desktop feeds a little bit better or if video playback is better so let's dive in and see so i'm going to hit enter right here would you like to the wayland backend to be enabled i'm going to hit yes Wayland is enabled. I'm going to hit finish and I, you are going to need to reboot. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll be on Wayland on our Raspberry Pi 4. 
Okay, so I have now rebooted and theoretically I should be on Wayland right now. So I'm going to open up my terminal to check since they gave this command on the Raspberry Pi OS update blog and they said that you can type in this command right here to see if you're actually on Wayland. So I'll hit enter and yes, we are on Wayland. So if that would have said X11, I would have known that I was not successfully on Wayland, but I am on Wayland right now. So let's dive in and see if the system UI feels any different than when we were on X11. So I will leave this on one side and record the desktop experience on X11, put them side by side, so you can really see what they look like. But I'm just going to be on X11 right now, and as you can see, I can open up right here. I can scroll through this window right here. I could open up the Files application, the Terminal, Chromium, and it doesn't feel much different to me than X11. Uh, just to my eye, I don't really notice a huge difference personally, personally, but I know some of you may, and that is okay, but overall, I don't notice a huge change. Like Everything seems pretty smooth, but I have noticed a couple of glitches. I don't know if you caught any of those on camera, but as you can see, like this window isn't really loading up right here. It's just clear, and then there's the occasional little glitch in the screen, which could be due to Wayland since I don't think I've ever experienced that in X11 before. So they're, they're, it is experimental, so you're not going to be expecting perfect it's a perfect UI and everything like that, but it seems okay. But what happens if we try to play a YouTube video? So here in Chromium, hopefully this will work out. I'm going to try to play a 1080p 60 video and see if that will work correctly. Okay, so my Wayland experience right here seems to be a little bit buggy. I hope you just caught that. It said that Chromium was not responding, so that is interesting. And I assume since we created a custom username, now it wants us to set a keyring. Because before on Raspberry Pi OS, at least LXDE, the default version, it never asked us to set a keyring. It was always by default. But it must be because you can create a custom user now. It needs a custom keyring, something like that. So that will be something that you need to create. But as you can see, my Chromium instance right here, oh, it is responding. My bad. But let's try to play Big Buck Bunny. 1080p and see if this is any better. I will record this on X11 too, put them side by side so you all can see if it's any better on Wayland versus X11. That is going to be interesting. If we can get better video playback on this, this is going to be a really amazing feature for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let me load this up real fast and then you'll see what it looks like. And here I am right now and as you can see it says Big Bug Bunny 60 FPS blah blah blah. Chromium is not responding, so I'm having some issues with Chromium. I had just tried to open up these tabs minutes ago, or seconds ago, and now they're just loading. Chromium seems to be a little bit buggy, so I think I'm actually going to go try to do a quick reboot, and hopefully the situation sorts itself out at least a little bit. Okay, so finally I rebooted and Chromium seems to be working a lot better right now. But here we are with Big Buck Bunny 60 FPS 4K and I have set this right here to 1080p 60 in quality. And I have stats burners open right here. So we're going to see if Wayland brings any improvements to the table or not. So I will be showing the X11 stats for nerds on the other side right here. So hopefully you guys can kind of compare the performance to see which one is actually better. But here we are in this video. Let's try to play it, and there was a little bit lag right there. So we are dropping 800, 900 frames out of... We are dropping a lot of frames according to stats for nerds right now on this 1080p60 video on our Raspberry Pi 4 running Way Wayland. So Wayland does not seems to be seem to be bringing many improvements to the table, at least to me. It really doesn't seem to be bringing much improvement over X11, at least yet. This still is inexperimental, so we do need to keep that in mind. Maybe in the future releases, we will get a little bit better performance. But let's say we want to switch this to 720p, which it looks like it's already... Maybe not. We'll switch this to 720p right here, and hopefully we'll be getting much better performance. So here in 720p, as you can see, we are dropping, we are still dropping frames out of this frame drop, which seems a little bit strange. I mean, the, the video playback still does seem to be a little bit laggy, which is sad. I really wish video playback was better on the Raspberry Pi 4, but this is what we have to live with. So even now, X11 may be a little bit better to stay on, depending on what you're really wanting to do with your Raspberry Pi 4, since Wayland is experimental. 
and I think it was like Ubuntu 21.10 or something, Wayland started shipping by default on the Raspberry Pi 4 on Ubuntu, which that didn't seem to bring many improvements to the table either, uh, as far as I can, can remember. But yeah, so we, this is what the Wayland experience is like on the Raspberry Pi 4. So you may run into some apps that don't work properly or don't scale properly or stuff like that with Wayland, but it is a start, and that is cool to see that we are finally looking at Wayland on the Raspberry Pi 4. So hopefully in future releases, this becomes a standard and Wayland is a default if they get it working better and things like that. So this was like an overview of some of the major updates that came in this release of Raspberry Pi OS. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or any comments about what I did in the video or any topics from the video, just hit me up in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a like to the to the video and a subscribe to the channel would be spectacular. Thanks for watching.